little animals like this, even if you bottle raise them, they are wild creatures. And even if you bottle raise them, when they get up to about this size, they become very, very skittish. They will bite. They don't make good pets. You don't ever want to try to keep these as pets around the house. Hello, I'm Martin Tyner, and my beautiful wife Susan's taking a video. We're bottle raising a couple of uh, least chipmunks. Came in a few days ago, and they're doing just fine. It won't be too long before uh, they're eating enough on their own that we don't have to bottle raise them anymore. A oh, baby. More? He about done. Yep. Okay, little one. Fill this back up. And try the other one. <laughs> Hard to find. Yeah, they do like to hide pretty well. That's the one we just did. Where's the other one? Oh, there he is. He's right in there. Deep inside. Still. Between layers, huh? Between layers. That's okay. Right here somewhere. I can feel him right there. Oh, I see a tail. Okay. Give me a little one. Give me a little chipmunk. Again, they're very, very cute, these little, little chipmunks. They do like to nuzzle in where they feel secure. So we give them, even when we feed them, we try to make sure they feel comfortable. Come, baby. Your turn. You're the one that's a little pickier to eat. Shh, my baby. Not this time. <laughs> no, I don't want to eat. Sneeze, sneeze, sneeze. Okay, baby. You're not going to eat. You're doing fine anyway. Like I said, they do wean themselves, and you have to kind of give them the opportunity. But you don't worry if they if they're not going to eat, because they start feeding on on dry food and drinking water out of the water bottle. Okay, my little friend. There you go. Yes, you are so cute. <laughs> go back in. There you go, little one. Okay. So we went out uh, out to the the west, out by the college farm, where there's uh, uh, alfalfa fields and there's uh, irrigation ditches and things where you could find pheasants, ducks, and rabbits uh, out in that area for for our birds to to chase and to attempt to catch. And so we went out to out by the college farm, and and this uh, one jackrabbit took off running. And and it ran out across the field, and one of the hawks was chasing the chasing the rabbit, 
and the hawk basically ran across an irrigation canal that it was frozen and the ice broke and the rabbit ended up in the irrigation canal the frozen canal with a, about a you know a real thin uh, layer of ice across the top of the canal and so myself and uh, a couple of other guys you know, we, we ran in, we saw the rabbit was struggling. It was gonna, gonna freeze and drown in the water. And so three of us literally jumped into the irrigation canal and, and it was up to up to our chest, just below, uh, and, um, and we struggle over, we get to the rabbit, we pick up the rabbit and we get the rabbit out of the irrigation canal, wrap the rabbit up in our coats and we're freezing to death, wrap the rabbit up in our coats to dry the rabbit off and warm it up. We bring the rabbit home. I get my wife's hair dryer out, you know, handheld dryer, and we blow dry the rabbit, and we get it all dry, and make sure the rabbit was okay, and we took the rabbit back out, and we released it back to the wild. And a lot of people just can't understand, well, you're hunting this rabbit, why did you literally try to freeze yourself to death to save a rabbit that you're just going to let your hawk, you were going to let your hawk catch and kill and eat? Well, that wouldn't have been fair. You know, the, the truth of the matter is, it really is not about putting food on the table. It's the experience of, of a partnership between an apex predator and human is, is the relationship. And what they do is hunt. That's fine. We, we respect that and we allow them to do what they do. But it really has very little to do with, with whether they catch anything or not. It has everything to do with, with doing it as appropriately and as humanely as possible. So, so that um, not only are the birds cared for properly, but the animals that they catch uh, are dispatched uh, in, in as humane a way as possible. And in that situation, it wasn't fair for the rabbit to drown in the irrigation canal, and so we, it needed to be rescued. And I know there's a lot of people out there that gonna think I'm just dumb as a brick, and you're probably right, but that's, that is the, how the ethics of falconry should work. Well, good afternoon. I'm Martin Tyner, and this is my beautiful wife, Susan. And we've got kind of a, a fun little activity that we're doing today. That We've got some uh, a couple of little baby lease chipmunks that uh, were brought to us that were just a, had just uh, started getting out of the nest and, and were, were not quite old enough to feed themselves, and they got picked up and all of that. There's our little guy. Just pretty little things. Leave, leave them in there for a minute. Leave them in there for a minute. And let's so we can see them. And that's our other little leash chipmunk. Get a branch they can crawl out on. And so these little guys are ready to be released back to the wild. We've had them, what, about three weeks soon? Yep. About three weeks. Just only need a little bit of formula. They were right at the weaning stage. They were. So. This is our smallest little chipmunk, and we're very, very happy to to release them. We're kind of just a little bit up the the mountain um, outside of Cedar City, which is kind of just prime okay. little chipmunk habitat. It's okay, little guys. I'm trying to give you a branch to crawl out on. I know you're scared to death. Yeah, and and this is actually something we need to let people know about. The little animals like this, even if you bottle raise them. They are wild creatures, and even if you bottle raise them, when they get up to about this size, they become very, very skittish. They will bite. They don't make good pets. Uh, and so we, you, you don't ever want to try to keep these as, as pets around the house. Thank you, Rob. They're, they're used to this old rag. See, yep. if, see if they will crawl up it and out. Come on, guys. I don't want to, don't want to scare you so bad. Come on. You can see the tails are all, it's a little hard because they're just moving their tails. Okay, there he goes. Okay. There goes one. Here's her, our little lease and he's gone. And here's our next one. Ready to go. And like I said, the tails. Your, you're a family member. Okay, that's not working. To get your he food. Says, he says, I'm being stressed. I need to be, yeah, just turn it, turn it to the side. Okay. This way. There you go. That's better Come on, baby. You. Say goodbye. Time for you to get back to the wild. Come on. Come on. Okay, 
there's our little East Chipmunk. He's going around the side of the rock. Yep. And there he's going. He's going to go join his buddy da down into the trees, the same place his buddy went. How cool. We've got pinion and juniper. We've got spruce. We've got other bigger pine trees. We've got oak. All kinds of good stuff here. So. And these little chipmunks, um, they really do like kind of a, 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 a mountainous area, but not super high elevation. And they, and they do like to be near water. We've got a little uh, stream. Close and so we've, by. we've got uh, the right hand canyon stream right here. So they've got a good water source, they've got plenty of cover. And so this is just an ideal little location for our, our chipmunks and get them back in the wild where they belong. So uh, there we go, folks. Another successful release of some little critters for the Wildlife Foundation. And so. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and we're going to head back, and we'll talk to you soon.